All right, Colorado, we are back. And it's time for us to continue our GM mode commentary with your Colorado Avalanche at the end of year number one. And look at this. He finally did it. Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals are your year one Stanley Cup champions. So before we get into the NHL entry draft, boys, where we got a lot to do, let's take a look at the awards. And uh, I, can't, I can't remember if I showed you the playoff tree in the last video. So if I did, whatever. If I didn't, here you go. So we can take a look at the road to glory for the Capitals. Round number one, they got by their rivals, the New York Rangers. How many times did the Rags kick out the Capitals in the Alexander Ovechkin era? They beat up Sidney Crosby in a four-game sweep in round number two. That must have felt great. In round number three, they got by uh, Carey Price and the Montreal Canadiens, 4-1. to one. And in the Cup Finals, they beat the Minnesota Wild. It only took them five games. So, my God, what a playoff run for the Capitals. They went 12 or... um. What was it? 16 and... 16 and 4? Yeah, 16 and 4 in the playoffs. They didn't have to go to a game 7 once. 16 and 4. A dominating performance from Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. All right, playoff awards. Let's see here. So the Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals. Back to back years, the Cup has stayed in the Eastern Conference. President's Trophy, the Montreal Canadiens. That's rough for them. They got to the Eastern Conference Finals just to lose in five games in the same year they won the President's. Could have been a great year for Montreal. Clarence S. Campbell, the winner of the Western Conference, goes to the Minnesota Wilds. And the Washington Capitals, the Prince of Wales. Same thing for the Eastern Conference. Player awards. All right, so the Art Ross goes to Sid the Kid Crosby, who led the league in point scoring. Hart Memorial goes to Connor McJesus, awarded to the player most valuable to his team. I'd say so. James Norris and <laughs> Shea Weber, point per game. Have to lower his stats a little bit. Lady Bing goes to Phil Kessel. All right, sportsmanship award. Calder Memorial. Memorial. All right, Patrick Laine. He was the leading rookie in point scoring this year. Con Smythe goes to Braden Holtby. Vesna Trophy goes to Carey Price. I suspect that after a President's Trophy run. Uh, William M. Jennings goes to uh, Braden Holtby. Bill Masterton goes to John Merrill. Frank J. Uh, pff, Jordan Stahl. Frank J. Selke goes to Jordan Saul. Uh, Stahl. Ted Lindsay, Connor McDavid, and Maurice Richard. Again, Alexander. How many years in a row is that for Ovi? What a year for Ovi. He won the Maurice Richard and he's going to end up winning that Stanley Cup. Who won the Conn Smythe? Yeah, it was Brayton Holtbeast. You know, I'd love to see, hang on, one more thing. I'd love to see what kind of player stats the Capitals had here in the playoff run. Kind of, uh, what kind of year did Alexander Ovechkin have? Because you know this playoff run, he's going to be remembering this one. All right, so goalies, no, 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 all skaters. Who was the leading point man? It was Nicholas Backstrom with 21. However, Alexander Ovechkin, 20 points, only one point behind Backstrom, but 13. Goals. Yeah, that's a playoffs to remember for Ovi. Only 20 games needed for the Capitals. They go 16 and 4. They have a great regular season, and Alexander Ovechkin with 13 goals and 20, uh, 20 games played finally gets it done and can call himself a Stanley Cup champion. You know what? I'm going to give a hand for Alexander Ovechkin myself. You guys should do the same. He freaking deserves it, even if it's only a video game. But now it's time to focus on what we need to do to finally uh, get us to that Stanley Cup. I mean, I guess the franchise is already won it but to get Nathan McKinnon his Stanley Cup just like Ovi got it okay we got to build a team around him so um the one thing that really sucks here is that I cannot show you guys the scouting report pre-NHL entry draft we can go into the draft but then you guys I mean the clock is going to be ticking right so EA that's something that you guys can fix uh for NHL I don't know 19 20 whatever you want to whenever you want to get around to it um so we're just going to go into the NHL entry draft right now okay I will show you guys uh I will show you guys what's available once we get in there so the colorado avalanche entering the nhl entry draft we were the worst team or the second worst team in the nhl but the lottery did not shine upon us we got kicked back to fourth boys the freaking dallas stars they were supposed to pick at like 10th or 11th and they won the lottery unbelievable so um, I know a lot of people in the comment section were pointing out that I should move up in the NHL entry draft, right? So the Dallas Stars, they don't want to give up their first round pick, their first overall pick, I should say. And I don't want to make any trades where I move up for picks that teams don't want to move away. It's just unrealistic. Now, I I've seen the comments. Johnny, trade away your first and two seconds and move up to get the first overall pick and get Nolan Patrick. You see, the, the trade value is there. But boys, I find that when you make trades like that, your GM mode just gets ruined, okay? We all know we can do it. You can trade away first-round picks from like eight years from now. I don't want to do that. If a team is willing to give up a player or, or a draft pick or want something back from me, fine. But uh, the Dallas Stars, 
Sharks hit the lottery, they're picking Nolan Patrick or Nico Hiche. Just the way it is, okay? Uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Let's see what these guys what their mindset is. Oh, the Winnipeg Jets. Okay, so they want to give up their first round pick. Interesting, because they won the lottery again. Last year, they got number two, which got them Patrick Line. This year, they won the lottery again at number two. Who could they get? They could get a center for him, even though Mark Shifley's looking nice. So if we acquire their first round pick, who would they want? Yeah, see, I mean, there's nothing going back. They don't even want, hang on a second here. Are you telling me they don't even want, yeah, they don't even want Gabriel Landeskog, Nathan McKinnon. They don't even want, they're valuing that pick, even though they want to trade it away. Hang on a sec. One more thing. Uh, skater. So Tyson Berry, Malak Johnson. No. I mean, I could, I could trade away like Tyson Berry along with a, uh, a first or a second. But I actually have plans for Tyson Berry, and boys, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, why, oh, why? They don't even want the first, so I'd throw in, like, two seconds in there. Tyson Berry in two seconds for the second overall pick. Again, an unrealistic trade. Just makes no sense in the world. And the Winnipeg Jets already have a plethora of right-handed defensemen. I mean, Bufflin, Myers, Truba. Why the hell would they want Tyson Berry? So, boys, I'm not doing it. I made sense with the Jonathan Druin trade, but I am not moving up to the first or second overall pick unless they'd be willing to take on... Gabriel Landeskog, someone with a high trade value. It's just not in the cards this year. The Vancouver Canucks at number three. Let's see. Are they willing? They're willing to give up their first round. Oh my God, Jim Benning, what the hell are you doing over there? No wonder your team is in dire straits. You're still trading away your first round picks. Uh, all right, so let's see. The same thing with them. Skaters matching the block. Do they have any players? Miko Rantanen, I'm not trading away him. Jonathan Druin, I'm not trading away him. Um, Aho, I don't want to trade away that player. Again, Gabriel Landeskog, he's not in there. I don't want to trade these guys away. So the, the Vancouver Canucks are willing to give up their pick, but they're not willing to take on the players that I want to use to trade to move up in the draft. Eric Johnson and um, and Gabriel Landeskog, those are the two players. Yeah, Rantanen, I don't want to trade. McKinnon, I don't want to trade. Druin, I don't want to trade. Landy, and that's the trade value. He also jumped up to an 88. That's the trade value for moving up to a top five pick. That's the trade value. But no one wants him. Yeah, and Eric Johnson as well. So, boys, we can't get it. We cannot acquire the first, second, third, or fourth overall pick. It's just not in the cards. I could make the trade, but it would be an unrealistic trade. So, it's just not going to happen, okay? So, I mean, the fifth. I could take a look at the fifth, but let's just see how the draft um, shapes up before that point. I want to know who I acquire at fourth overall. So, this is hard to see, boys. I, I, we tried to tank. We did end up be, being the second worst team in the NHL, but... The lottery, like I said, just did not shine upon us, and the trades are just not there, so we have to do it. Okay, so the first overall pick, the Dallas Stars select Nico Hiche. First overall, so Nolan Patrick does not get selected, boys. So now uh, Jason Spets it down the middle. I mean, that could still work temporarily, but they got Jamie Bend, Tyler Sagan, and now Nico Hiche is their second line center. Woo, the Dallas Stars looking nice. So next up, you got the Winnipeg Jets who drafted, what's his name, Patrick Line last year, and this year they scoop up Nolan Patrick. Watch out for the Winnipeg Jets, boys. And isn't Nolan Patrick from the Winnipeg era? area? Jesus, I just gaffed that. Um... Or maybe he's not. I can't remember. Well, either way, it's a great pick for the Winnipeg Jets. Next up, you got the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, sim options. I don't want to accidentally sim pick. Does the timer stop when I go into these options? Yes, they do. All right, so sim pick. Who are the Vancouver Canucks going to take? Now, remember, I would love to pick up Timothy Liljegren right here. We need that defenseman, but Vancouver might select him. Sim pick. Who are they going to take? Oh, they took Gabriel Velarde. Okay. It's not that they made a bad choice. It's just that, uh, you know, we need a second-line playmaker, a second-line center, I should say, of the future. But we have, um, we have bigger holes to fill, especially on the blue line. And that's going to leave Timothy Liljegren available. So anyone saying that the uh, Vancouver Canucks made the mistake of drafting a center, he's not. He he's a center playmaker at elite. So now they got Bo Horvat and Velarde down the middle. They're starting to build over there in Vancouver. And that will leave the Colorado Avalanche the fourth overall pick. So I was angry at first. When we drop down to fourth overall, it means that we wouldn't get Hiche or uh, Patrick, who are both the high elite players. But I'm perfectly fine with selecting a guy like Timothy Liljegren, who is uh, elite. Uh, Maxime Komtos, who is elite. Owen Tippett, I believe, is high top six. Uh, Shishko is high top nine. I think there might be a few more elites down here. So there's definitely players that we can draft here, boys. Let me just take a look at this list. Because if we're going to move up in the draft, I mean, five... 
We got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's your 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think Valim uh, Valimaki might, might, might not be a bad player. 15. Cheney we've seen. 15. Somarukov. That guy might not be bad. Th Thielander might not be bad as well. Yeah, there's certainly some picks here. Any more? I'm just, I'm trying to remember the names. Goaltender, Stuart Skinner, and uh, Lukanen. We're trying to find a prospect goalie of the future, maybe. Brandstrom, Kreisky. Oh, yeah, there's definitely some nice players in the first round this year, boys. So the clock is ticking. I just wanted to know if uh, I'd still be willing to trade away uh, Gabriel Landeskog or Eric Johnson for a first-round pick. And you know what? If I could get something in the top 15, I think I want to do it. Okay, but that's not what we need right now. We need to take a look at what's available. So if I'm looking at this list, it's between two players, Timothy Liljegren and Maxime Komtos. So you guys already know we're going with option C, the accelerated rebuild. We have Nathan McKinnon as our first line center. We acquired Jonathan Drouin, the sniper winger. We have Rantanen, okay? There are question marks everywhere else. On the point, Tyson Berry, I might hold on to him for the meantime. Other than that, we don't have any prospect defensemen. Uh, Big Grass and Zadorov, maybe, but I'm talking about elite defensemen, future top two. This guy might be the answer. Timothy Liljegren. Now, it's always hard to find a right-handed defenseman who's not a, a, a defensive guy. This guy's two-way defender. He's a super Swede. He's right-handed, 5 foot 11, 200 pounds. I didn't scout the SHL at all. All right. Or we could go with a left wing playmaker. Now, this could make sense as well. We have Jonathan Drouin on the right side. We have Nathan McKinnon. We have Tyson Jost coming up. We have Miguel Grigorenko and Rantanen as right wing snipers. Another playmaker on the left side because we don't know how good JT Comfer is going to grow. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, okay? So, Timothy Liljegren, the defense, and Maxime Komtos, the playmaker. If I if I got to choose these guys, if I got to look at these guys as equals, like you're getting the same kind of player, the only difference is position. They're both going to be elite studs in their respective positions. I got to select Timothy Liljegren. We got to look at our uh, needs uh, positionally, and we have a need, a desperate need on the back end defensively, okay? So, a super sweet right-handed two-way defender, Timothy Liljegren. We are going to select them, boys. Welcome to the Colorado Avalanche with 11 seconds left. He's medium elite. There it is. Okay, so we weren't able to get the first four. What about number five? Uh, yeah, number five. The uh, New York Islanders. Are they willing to give up their first? Because what did I say? Yes, they are. Okay, they are. Now, Eric Johnson. Would they be willing to take Eric Johnson? That's the one I need. I need like an Eric Johnson and then a first overall pick and I would do it. Ranton and McKinnon drew it. Oh, they want Landy. They want Landy. Okay. 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 Let me think about this a second here, boys. Okay, so if I trade for this pick, I know I get Maxime Comtos back, okay? And Maxime Comtos is the left-wing playmaker. Now, Gabriel Landeskog is already that left-wing power forward. And I, I was reading your comments, as I always do, and a lot of people were pointing out the fact that, Johnny, why the hell would you trade away Gabriel Landeskog? If, if, if you're trying to find playmate or uh, not playmakers, players to play alongside of McKinnon, you know, you got Drew in from the right side, but the left-wing power forward, Gabriel Landeskog, is the perfect fit as well. I mean, he gets enough points, and he can be that power, gritty guy to play alongside of McKinnon and Drew in. While you guys make the great point, remember... We were going for option C, which is an accelerated rebuild. This team, the Colorado Avalanche, they don't have the prospects and depth coming up from underneath to help out the studs. So by trading away Landeskog, you're trading away for multiple assets. I already acquired the Jonathan Drouin. By trading away a guy like Landeskog or Johnson, remember the original plan was to get a grade A prospect and a pick. You turn one great player into two uh, potential pieces. So Landeskog is one great piece, but I might be able to get two for him. You see, and so you start to build the team that way. So let me just put Landy out there. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, you could get, I could get the fifth overall pick, Maxime Komtos, to replace Landeskog. He's not going to be as good as him in year one or two, right? But he's the replacement for him. And then I might be able to get something else in this trade as well like uh okay jason chimera no uh let me just go to their all skaters here i got the first let me take a take a look at the prospects here uh we got bellows Kiefer bellow i think he's a left wing sniper right well why, why would they yeah they could hold on to him i mean they're trying to find guys to play alongside of john tavares for the future uh witherspoon matthew barzell his trade value is way up there let's just let's say i put barzell in there because we do need to find the second line center as well no way up there and they don't want to give him up so you know i don't really see us acquiring any prospects from this team 
I mean, Kiefer Bellows could be one that we get. Let me just let me just grab him and select. Let's see what the trade value looks like. I mean, if I add a first rounder in there or, or something, I might be able to make that work. And then you turn Landy into two. You turn him into Maxim Comtos and then maybe a middle six sniper, Kiefer Bellows, right? But again, the uh, value, I might have to add a little bit more. What about the draft pick for next year? Hang on a sec. Do they want to give up their first round pick for next year? Because they might not be a good team next year. Ooh, they want to give up. How about, oh, Gabriel Landeskog for two firsts. Now this, oh, this makes sense because they're trying to hold on to John Tavares. They want to make, they want to sign him next year. He's 94 overall. You got to find a winger for him. He's only got what one year left. He's going to have one year left after this year. It's two years left just because we haven't crossed the NHL entry draft. But you got to find a forward to play alongside of him. And what is they, what do they have so far? Anders Lee, Ryan Strom, Gabriel Landeskog would be the guy to play alongside of John Tavares. And they're trying to find something right now. And they want to give up their first, and they want, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that, boys. I'm going to do that. Thank God the uh, the the clock doesn't tick while uh, I'm selecting other teams. I have to think about this. Uh, so look at this, boys. Look at this. So I select the Islanders first from this year and their first from next year. That first from next year might be a great pick because even though they're getting Landeskog, their team still ain't the greatest. It's not deep. They don't have goaltending. And I'll acquire the prospect for this year. You know what, boys? I like this. I like this. So Gabriel Landeskog for the first round pick this year, which is fifth overall, and a first round pick from next year from the New York Islanders. Straight up. Straight up. I don't know if it'll go through, but I'm going to try it. Straight up. Will it go through? It's just a little bit far. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you want a draft pick to make up for this year, I suppose. So you know what? I'll add in a third, and I'll add in a yeah, seventh, sixth, and fifth. There you go. I'll make this go through. Yeah, I'll make this go through. Landeskog, a third, a seventh, a sixth, and a fifth from this year, boys, for two firsts. Will it go through? Oh, still no. Oh, shit, I just hit my mic. Hang on a sec. Should probably fix that. Uh, okay, okay. You know what I'll do? Let me do some uh, power video editing. I'll find the right trade. Just give me a second here. Okay, so I sweetened the deal just uh, slightly. I might have to add in the third. Landeskog and these two prospects that I'm not going to use, but they have the green name, so the Islanders want them. So let's try it out. Landeskog, Greer, Nantel, a seventh and a sixth for the two first round picks. Will it go through? On behalf of the New York Islanders organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So boys, there it is. I want it. That's an Another blockbuster, man. That's got to be considered a blockbuster. Gabriel Landeskog to the New York Islanders. So we didn't acquire the first to fourth overall pick. We missed. Uh, we missed out on Hiche, Nolan Patrick, Gabriel Velarde. But at number four, I should say the first three picks we missed out on. At number four, we picked up Timothy Liljegren, and now at number five, we can select Maxim Comtos. I wanted to get this guy. Um, no matter what, I was tr I, I was trying to figure out if I wanted uh, Timothy Liljegren or this guy. I mean, uh, left wing playmaker. I know he's elite potential, and that fills out that left wing side because now you have JT Comfer and Maxime Komtos on the left as playmakers. You got Grigorenko, Druin, and Rantanen on the right side. Now we just got to find a, uh, a second line center, and we may have already found it in Tyson Jost. If not, that's the third line center. We just got to find that second line center. The team is coming together, okay, boys? So Maxim Comtos, I'm going to draft him. Playmaker, there it is. So at four and five, the Colorado Avalanche select two elite players. Not bad. It sucks that we missed out on the first three, like I said, but with my updated rosters, the top 10 is juicy. No worries about it. Okay, boys, so we acquired those two. Now, let me just go here. Do we want to move up? We have another first round pick, do we not? Or do we? I can't remember, actually. No, actually, I think we traded it. It's Eric Johnson that we have to look at now. But if we're going the uh, the quick rebuild, I still have to find that defenseman. Now, I want to tell you guys my strategy with the defenseman for next year. Because a guy like Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Druin, you know, they can score goals. I want to make sure I have a defenseman who can also chip in for that. And Tyson Berry, even though he is 87 overall, he's got some decent trade value. He's only 25 at 5.5 for another 4 years. I'd like to hold on to this guy because... Timothy Liljegren, first off, is not ready. His passing is up at 90. His offensive awareness is up at 89. If you're looking for a defenseman to help Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Drouin get points, this guy on the power play could help out 
Definitely. But Eric Johnson as the uh, the two-way defenseman with heavy defensive stats, 29 years of age, seven years left. I got to find a trade for this guy, okay? And then we have Zadorov and Bigris. I, I'm, Timothy Lilligren might even be ready to play year one. Look at that, 79 overall. Woo, baby. So let me try to find a trade for Eric Johnson. We already got our, our prospects. I think I'm done trading in the NHL entry draft. What I want to do now is complete option C, the accelerated rebuild. We found the winger. Now I got to find that defenseman. Okay, we already have Tyson Berry, but I want to find that offensive defenseman that can play alongside of him. Probably a left-handed offensive defenseman so that he could play alongside of Timothy Liljegren when he's ready to go. So give me, uh, give me some time here, boys. I'll be right back. All right, boys, so I found a taker. The team that lost to the Washington Capitals in round number two in a four-game sweep, the Pittsburgh Penguins. They're interested in Eric Johnson, and I'm interested in Derek Pouliot. Offensive defenseman, left-handed, 23 years of age. He's not the elite potential. He's only high top four. The reason that is is I need to uh, I need to save some value in the trade here. We made our big-time splash when we acquired Jonathan Drouin. His trade value was off the charts. So with Derek Pouliot, I'm taking a step back. You can see it's uh, below half, but a high top four, his ceiling would be in the high 80s, and if I play him well, he might even get to the 90s. And an offensive defenseman to play alongside of McKinnon and Drew in, this is what I'm talking about, boys. So they want Eric Johnson. They don't want to give up Derek Pouliot. That's why it's going to be a little bit of a, a rough trade here. I'm going to send Boykov, uh, Gertson, two AHL top two defensemen that I'm not going to use. Uh, the second round pick in this year's NHL entry draft and a fifth round pick like i said um the trade value even though it's not that high up it's still going to take a lot could you imagine if i tried to acquire a guy like uh lindholm or cam fowler the anaheim ducks they got a lot of defensemen but their trade values are way too high and they don't want to give up the player and i'm running low on on uh, what is the, what's the word i'm looking for assets there you go i'm running low on assets to trade away with high value myself. So we're going to have to settle for this, boys. Eric Johnson for Derek Pouliot. Will it go through? Ooh, still not. Just a little bit low. We really have to overextend for this. But, boys, this was the plan. The option C, the accelerated rebuild. So instead of the fifth round pick, I will send them if the... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Did I take away the fifth already? Yeah, I already did. My bad. Uh, we will send the fourth back to the Pittsburgh Penguins. If that doesn't work, I will send a third round pick over there. Let's see. Oh, it did go through. So welcome Derek Pouliot to the Colorado Avalanche and goodbye Eric Johnson, who is signed to six years, six more years uh, for the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll see how they play now with Eric Johnson in their lineup. They got a pretty good defensive core now. Let's see. Oli Mata, Chris Letang. They gave up Derek Pooley up, but with Eric Johnson, they should be able to keep the puck out of the net a lot more as well with that stud forward core. So Chris Letang, Justin Schultz, that's it. Eric Johnson, Dumlin, uh, Trevor Daly, Ian Cole, Ole Mata. Yeah, they got a nice bunch of defensemen there. Uh, and Trevor Daly, 33. He's only got one year left. Yeah, they can let Trevor Daly go now because they got Eric Johnson. Okay, I just hit my mic again. I keep hitting my mic with my damn controller. What the hell? So, boys, there it is. Within a matter of moments, the Colorado Avalanche, before the NHL entry draft, didn't have any of these players. Now we got Timothy Liljegren, Maxime Comtos, and Derek Pouliot. Welcome to the Fast Track Rebuild, boys. So, that's it. That's all we got now. Offer trade. I think that is all we can trade away. There was one more player that I would have loved to have gotten my hands on for the accelerated rebuild. It's from the Stanley Cup champions, and I'd be willing. I I I, I would think that they would want to trade this guy away. No, they don't even want to trade him away. Uh, Samsonov. This guy is a 76 overall, 20 years of age, elite potential. If we could acquire this guy, then our team would be set. But uh, I need him to be. I need them to be willing to trade him away. And that would, that would take a lot. That trade value is way up there. I don't think we have anything that we could trade back uh, to acquire him. Picard, you better grow this year, my man. Uh, so let's take a look at the All Skaters tab. I think we got everything off the team that we need to. Let me just search by age here. Yeah, that's everybody, 27. And then Tyson Berry, I want to hold on to for year number one. I think we could be a decent, yeah, a decent team in year number two. We don't need to have that year two uh, tank that we had... 
like we had in year number one. We don't. We had the accelerated rebuild. We have a lot of young prospects on this team, a lot of young talent. Hell yeah, man. Sim options, sim to user pick. So, boys, I want to know what you think about those moves that I made. We got Liljegren, Comtos, and Derek Pouliot after trading away Gabriel Landeskog and uh, Eric Johnson. Remember, with... Oh, what the... No! What happened? I fucking just backed fucking EA Voodoo. I swear to Christ. Why did I back out? Oh, I have to do all those trades again. What if they... Ah! Power of fucking video editing. Hang on. Well, boys, we're back. That freaking EA Voodoo, though. It just won't stop. Uh, we got lucky. We had the exact same lineup in the draft. He shade to Dallas. Patrick to Winnipeg. Gabriel Velarde to Vancouver. I redrafted a Timothy Liljegren and Comtos. And I traded for Derek Pouliot. And we have everything that I did. Oh, my God. If that happens again. Can you believe that nonsense? Thank God I didn't have too much to do. All right, sim options. Let's try to quickly get this done so I can freaking save it. Uh, sim to user pick. Yeah. So we just drafted Liljegren, uh, Comtos. We traded for Derek Pouliot. Hopefully now the game does not freeze and we can continue to draft. Going up to round number two. Here we go. Pick number 21 in round number two. So, I mean, we've already really acquired uh, the, 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 the players that are going to help us out. What we need now is just some prospects. Maybe if they grow, that's great, but trade bait. Trade bait, trade bait. I want to make sure I hit somebody like a high top nine. I might as well just take this guy down here because that's probably a low top six, if anything. AHL high top four. AHL top six. No, 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 no. Don't need any of these guys. AHL top six, four. That guy wouldn't be bad, but I think this K Lind guy I should go with. Uh, but also goaltenders, Di Pietro, I mean, oh man, goaltender, should I get a goalie? No, no, n listen to yourself, go with Kay Lind, you know how the draft works, Cole Lind, he is, it's a high top nine, if anything, the worst he'll be is a low top six, and low top sixes can grow, and he's a two-way forward, and you, you need depth, so you know what boys, I'm doing it, Kay Lind, the Canadian, let's see, should be low top six, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, low top six potential. You know, that's pretty good. I'll take that. I need some depth players, and there's one right there. Kay Lind, sim to user pick. We got our studs in the uh, at uh, three and four overall. Second round, 30th. Okay, so we're still here in the second round. Let me see if there's anybody I can acquire here. Game's kind of taking its sweet-ass time. Yeah, it's taking its time to load. Oh, my God, what's going on? It's slowing down, boys. It's slowing down. AHL top six forward. I think this guy would grow because then it would be a bottom nine or top nine and then top six. I think this guy would be a low top six forward as well. Yeah, let's, you know what? Another right wing two-way forward. I'll grab two of them. Let's see. Oh, it was the last round. Let me just quickly take a look at round number two. See where this guy, uh, see what this guy's potential was. Let's see. Hey, there it is. Medium top nine potential. I'll take that as well. So we hit in the second round two players who look to be NHL bound. Uh, sim to user pick. It, if I if I play them the right way. Great thing about two way forwards, grinders, power forwards. You know, you only need them to hit lower 80s, and then you can play them on the fourth or third line if anything. So I, I, I like that. We already know that our top six is coming along. So getting these guys in the bottom six is not a bad idea. I, you know what? I could use a defensive defenseman as well. Uh, coin. Here we go. AHL top six. Oh, no, it's AHL top two. AHL top four. That defenseman might, might not be bad. Uh, Dada Shanoff. Oh, my God. Dada, Dada Shanoff. You know, because of that name, I have to draft him. Dada Shanoff. Dada Noff's goofy cousin, boys. Dada Shanoff. Let's see how good this guy is. High AHL top two. Well, you know what? The, the good thing about the high AHL top two is at least it is trade bait because the high potential makes it that much better. But you never know. This guy end up, he could be a top six defenseman. Could be an injury-bound defenseman for us. So he could be in the ace in the hole for the playoffs. Round number three, pick 19, the Colorado Avalanche. 79th overall pick. Can we find anyone that's available here if the game freaking just goes through here we go uh let's see let's see let's see but bango ahl bottom six no ahl seventh defenseman no ahl top two i might as well just grab this guy you might as well go well, ahl top four you know what heskinen two-way defender is he left-handed he is left-handed he's 17 years of age 
This guy might be a low top six. Let's see. He might be a low top six or a medium seventh defenseman. Something like that. Let's see. Heskanainen. Heskainen. Let's see. Low top six. I'll take that. I'll take that. I hit again, boys. We hit another NHL bound defenseman. Sim to user pick. What you don't want is the medium AHL of anything. You just do not want that. Uh, okay. So we have the 88th overall pick. Come on, man. Just keep on hitting. Keep on hitting these depth players. I could use a goaltender. I haven't drafted a goaltender just yet. If I see a goalie on the list, I might just pick him up. Let's see. No goaltender on the list. Hedberg, seventh. Oh, Hedberg. Did I draft him with Toronto? I can't remember. That looks familiar. But the reason I like that. Oh, grinder, AHL top six. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go for the grinder. I'm going to go for the grinder. This guy could be a center of the future, AHL. He would be he would be like a low top nine. Yeah, low top nine. There it is, Olsen grinder. Okay, so he's got a center grinder. Remember what I said, we are kind of weak down the middle. Other than uh, other than McKinnon and Jost, we don't know. And we don't know what Jost is going to be uh, going to become. So, uh, bottom six centers that can play. Grinders, two-way forwards, power forwards. I want them, boys. I'll take them. Let's see what we got now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab that Hedberg guy. He's still there as well. Yeah, I'm going to grab Hedberg because he's high 7th D-man. He might be low top 6. Let's see. Oh, medium top 6. We hit again, boys. We hit again. That name rings a bell, though. Did I draft Hedberg with the Toronto Maple Leafs? If I did, I don't remember using him. Trade bait, though. Medium top 6. That's trade bait. Uh, fourth round, we have the 100 or 117th overall pick. Can we hit something here, boys? Just give me a low top nine, a low top six. Just give me something NHL bound, and I'll take it. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. AHL top two, Brooke. Uh, Jarrett, AHL top four, fourth line, fourth line. No, I don't see anything that really pops out at me. You know what, goaltender. AHL fringe goaltender, uh, Guerra, Guerra. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a pick here. We need a, fuck, I keep hitting my mic. What's going on? Medium starter. Oh my God. We're hitting everything, boys. What a freaking pick in the fourth round. At 27th overall, we get a medium starter, Guerra. All right, I'll take that, man. Sim options. This has been a great draft for the Colorado Avalanche. Fifth round pick, second overall. I think this is our last one. Let's see if we can hit again. Oh, I was smart grabbing that goaltender. Even though he's probably only going to be like 62 overall, you never know. He could end up growing. Uh, AHL top six, AHL top four, AHL top four. All right, there's really nothing I can go with here. Uh, let's see, should I go down? Unknown, unknown, AHL top six, AHL top six. You know, let me just, um, this last pick, I'm going to sort by potential. Let me try to see if I can find, I mean, a medium backup. That guy could grow in the seventh round, A Domi, medium backup. That guy could end up being a low starter. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to grab this guy, A Domi. We need goaltenders, boys. I'm going to do it, A Domi. Let's see. Uh, low starter, there it is. So I got a medium starter and a low starter in the fourth and fifth round. I'll take it. Sim to user pick. Maybe a backup goalie of the future. Maybe AHL goalie of the future. I'll take it, boys. So I think that's it. And the NHL entry draft for year number one has come to an end. And what a day it's been for the Colorado Avalanche. I'll take it, boys. I'll take it. EA Voodoo tried to screw us up, but maybe it actually helped us out. Timothy Liljegren, Maxime Komtos, K. Lind, L. Turvdun, Dadashanov, <laughs> Heskinen or Heskinen, oh god, Olsen, Hedberg, Guerra, and Domi. Welcome to the Colorado Avalanche. Now because No! What the fuck, EA? I just what I just I just downloaded a new rock or a new gameplay update. Is that what's fucking with the game now? They introduced something Oh my god! And I'm not gonna get those players back. You know I'm not gonna this fucking game. I'm gonna try one more time. EA. EA, what the fuck is going on? Boys, I'm about to lose my fucking shit. This is absolutely ridiculous. I just came back to do it again, and it shut down on me again. Now, I think I'm on to something, and I need you guys to do some testing for me. Turn on your NHL 17s and try this out. Go to the NHL Enter Draft and see if you can get through it, because... Before I recorded today, there was about a 300 and something megabyte download. It was a gameplay tuner. Downloaded it, came in, applied it, started recording, and now this shit is going on. I'm guessing, because it's EA Sports and they're god-awful, 
they gave us a gameplay update that once downloaded completely glitches out your offline game modes. I'm interested to see if French Fries in the Stanley Cup Finals is going to be corrupt now because of this fucking gameplay update. So you know what, boys? I'm just... I want to see if we can get through the NHL entry draft, all right? So sim options, sim entire draft. We're going to try to get this done, try to exit the screen. It's going to go to the same one as last time. It will it actually exit the draft. Let's see. It doesn't. So bye-bye GM mode. Bye-bye NHL. 17 79.99 for this horse shit product what's the what's the excuse now ea where are the dipshit apologists who will say this game's awesome this game's great give the developers some fucking uh, give them a break what the fuck are you guys smoking man are you kidding me four years into current gen how many months like four or five months into nhl 17 and i'm having corrupt offline game files because of gameplay updates from this piece of shit developer known as ea sports what's the excuse now huh what, what what's the excuse i want my 79.99 back ea fucking hell i want the money that i'm gonna lose from this gm mode commentary that i can't complete now because you're dipshit fucking programmers what the fuck Oh my god, boys, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done this for the day. Hopefully we can salvage this. I can't even get through the goddamn draft. The save file was Gonzo Alonzo, and I guarantee you it was the gameplay update that they gave us uh, today to download. So I need you guys to help me out here, okay? Turn on your NHL 17s, start up a GM mode, tell me if you can get by the year one NHL entry draft, because this is fucking... It, it, it could be, it could be that old files saved before the, 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 the newest updates are no longer compatible. So maybe if you start a new GM mode, it won't happen. To, but to the old files, it does happen. And then in which case we're screwed. Maybe I can get rid of the current, uh, uh, what's it called, gameplay tuner and, and delete it. Don't install it so I can actually play my offline game modes. This is a fucking joke. Thank you very much, EA. And thank you very much for the apologists that continue to allow this shit to happen. Fucking, oh, what a joke. What a fucking joke. Be sure to check out our website, 2bcsports.com, where the hockey talk continues. Find myself and others in the live interactive chat or dive into the active forums to talk about sports and gaming. You can also find us on Twitch where the live streams come to life. Fuck